This podcast is supported by listeners like you. We're grateful for your tax-deductible donation at newthoughtphilly.org or the link in the episode description. A practical prayer is a prayer that works. These discussions between Reverend Bill Marcioni and Carol Lawrence dive into the details of how it works and how to work it. Reverend Bill is a New Thought minister and the author of Practical Prayer for Real Results. Your new life begins with a new thought. Carol Lawrence is on a spiritual quest, finding the New Thought teaching after decades on the pulpit in three different traditional denominations. I've got some questions. Together, they're exploring the philosophy and activities that come together from many of the world's religions to create the practical spirituality that is New Thought. Welcome to the Practical Prayer Podcast. I'm Carol, here with Reverend Dr. Bill Marcioni. I'm excited. We are on episode about... number 159. <sighs> We've been talking about this stuff for a while, and you managed to have come up with a fresh inquiry, a line of inquiry for today. I wish I could um, take credit for coming up with something fresh. It's just life, you know? Well, yeah. I'm, uh, this is certainly not an idea that's new, but it's new for this podcast. So I'm looking forward mm. to. Uh, to, to, to getting into it. And as you were describing what it was that came up for you, you did one of my favorite things, which is to say, well, here's something that's going on in my life right now. And now let's wind all the way back through history and find out where the influences for that came from and where the influences for that came from. And you made your way back to the philosophical uh, underpinnings, the founder of basically what we talk about and we're, we're, we're all into in New Thought. Um, or the the unity teachings, the teachings of oneness, which is uh, the writings of Ralph Waldo Emerson. Yes, yes. Um, just just as a side note, when I was really little, and before they had television that had a lot of channels and stuff, you know, you only had three, six, ten, and twelve. I don't even think was there at first. Well, I'm really telling it. But um, yeah, and you had to stand up and walk across the room and make the thing go chunk, 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 chunk. Just so many, you know. And my mom had her hairdressing business that she did on the side, and she just plunked me in there and say, "Here, watch TV or read a book." Well, there were no books like there are now, you know, no Dr. Seuss or anything like that. <laughs> <laughs> just Such read. Popper's child. Right? No, it was. It just was <laughs> weird, right? And I, I, I was the only child for a long time, so it was fine. I mean, I didn't know it was a, it was any problem with it. But anyway, I, I read a lot of poetry that I now know are from, you know, Ernest, um, not Ernest Holmes. I didn't meet him then, but um, Emerson and. Um, Walt Whitman and all those kind of people that I didn't know they were whatever. So anyway. Um, that is not what most people would think of as a, an impoverished childhood, by the way. So okay, you, well. did, you did things differently then. <laughs> you <Yeah, laughs> still do. You know, and I actually learned how to really read well before kindergarten because I had to, you know, you read those books and yeah. my aunts would teach me how to sound out the words and you read them. They didn't say anything. Just go read that. Read. <laughs> so anyway. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> That's a whole nother story. But um, I did have an uncle that was so amusing. When he would tell us a story, he said, well, what happened before that? And then what before that? And what before that? I think I probably picked that up from him. So while I'm here reading and trying to keep up with you, and you'll say something, (laughs) (laughs) because it is, you know, like an exercise in energy, really, keeping up fun, really. So I'm always like, what happened? What happened before that? And who said this before that? And I bumped into... Uh, Emerson. And and it's not like I didn't know he was there. I just kind of put him on the side. And I told you, I, I made a funny remark to you before we came on. I said, Emerson said to me, why did you push me aside? And why are you surprised when I talk to you first? <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> so finally, your relationship with Emerson comes back around. Yeah. And okay, so that's a come around. But the, the really... Neat part. I don't know if it's fun. It is fun, sort of. As I read more and more, and then a lot of the other, his contemporaries came up, I said, this is all stuff like right now. You know, it's it's just here today, right now. Are we repeating? And of course, people say um, history repeats itself. And, and then there's that line that I don't use anymore. 
about life being a repeat. Scratch that mm-hmm. spirit. I'm not trying to enforce it. <laughs> <laughs> enough is enough, right? Yeah, yeah. But in but it came back, and I was just I was just smiling about that because for this reason, we get all freaked out over things that are happening in in the uh, social world, you know, politically mm-hmm. and otherwise. And I thought, well, you know what? This all happened before. And if you move forward, it's happened several times before. So how did we handle it before? Okay, so why are we all freaked out about stuff? And when you pull it into your personal space, I think it applies there also. You know, like this has happened, if not to you, to somebody else. It Mm -hmm. ain't going to kill you. You know, although it feels like Um, it. Yeah, it's it's, it's probably not going to kill you. Yeah. And if it does, isn't it interesting that that's the thing that winds up doing it? All the dangerous things that I've done in my life and something seemingly innocuous would take me out. I mean, okay, something's going to. Yeah. But yeah, for the most part, it's not going to kill you. It's not going to kill you. And then the other thing, I mean, I'm asking why, like I, I'm in the middle of a repeat, <laughs> a different repeat than I was in last week. <laughs> that's such a funny thing. And <laughs> <laughs> I thought, okay, okay, what is going on here? Like, what is the message here? And here's what I came up with, just, you know, a superficial thought. Now I have an opportunity to respond to this thing differently than I did before, because I'm in a different space Mm -hmm. in life now. And so I can respond to it this way, or I can experiment and respond another way. So Mm -hmm. I'm doing an experiment right now. I'm responding in a different way. Okay. I don't know if it's so going to work. What were some of the things? Well, we'll see. We'll definitely see. What were some of the things that Emerson was talking about that you're saying, wow, that's that's coming up again? I mean, because there was a whole bunch that was going on, ideas and current events and politics and so forth. Really, it was, I, I'm going to use the term ideas. Um, and, I, and I like that word. I've been searching for that word forever and didn't know that it was appropriate in this in this context. Um he, Transcendental meditation or transcendentalism. You know, I remember that. It's like, oh, okay, all right. And I, f- it was like having a conversation with Emerson and Holmes going off in my mind at the same time because there was so much reflection there. Um, it was hmm. Holmes kind of maybe uh, quoting or reflecting on Emerson. So it's like they were friends. And if you have a good imagination, you can think about them sitting there talking to each other. So it was ideas. And, okay, here you go. There are ideas now that you have it, that are new thought that really aren't new. It's, it's been here all along. But here's the, here's the thing. Like, I still have uh, interaction on both sides of the street. So if Mm -hmm. those that are new that don't know what I mean by that, that means that I had a career in the traditional church and, you know, there's still some interaction I have with people there. And so, okay, so that's what I call the other side of the street. So I call this side of the street, New new Thought, where I live right now. This is my Mm -hmm. home. Thank you, Reverend Bill, for saying welcome home. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> Welcome home. Welcome home. So this is my home, but I still have friends and connections over there. And these ideas, I like to say ideas because it's like not the truth, but it's a truth. And it's mm-hmm. a truth that makes us makes so much sense, but they're ideas. And we have problems with ideas, new ideas. You know, people do because they, they have a whole idea and you're like secure in it. And to even address a new idea is such a threatening thing. So you go back to Emerson and he's talking about in transcendentalism, things that are, this stuff ain't new, right? It's just not new. Meditation, the word was used back then. Now we act like it's some big, deep, mysterious, (laughs) you know. Oh yeah, now we figure out how to do it. (laughs) Yeah, well, you know, thank God it's better than it used to be because, you know, maybe in 19, in the 90s, in the 80s even, meditation was like, oh, you're a weird person. But, you know, Emerson talked about that. And it's, why are we acting like things are new? Just embrace what's unfamiliar. Because, 
okay, so I'm going to get wooey, right? It's God. Well, you know, that's not wooey. That's kind of the basics there. But it's God expressing in different ways. You know, some people meditate, some people do it this way, do it that way. But it's it's like the same thing. So why do we get all upset over it? Um, well, I'm sure that was a rhetorical question, but I'm going to answer it anyway. Why yes. do we get upset about it? Because we can. If you turn on the, the news tonight, and it doesn't matter when you listen to the recording of this, if you turn on the news tonight, they will be describing some conflict, difficulty, challenge, or disaster. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And that's mm-hmm. what's happening today, whenever today happens to be, because that's, that's what it's there for. Mm-hmm. And if there's nothing that's a, a huge disaster, then they'll go find whatever is a disaster. And uh, <laughs> if there's nothing that could be described as a disaster, they'll make something up. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. How dare this person say that about the disaster that we had before? Because they can't possibly mean it. I mean, game on. We could, we get to do that. So um, the things in the news aren't necessarily new. Being new is not what makes them news. It's just mm-hmm. something to talk about. Mm-hmm. So when something happens, we talk about it. And we always act like it's new, even if it's happened over and over and over again in the past. You know, it's hurricane season now mm-hmm. in the North Atlantic. Yes, yes. And and the meteorologists are all talking about, oh my God, there's a hurricane season. It's like, well, we've had them before. Yes, yes, <laughs> yes. <laughs> and, and, and I'm I'm willing to go out on a limb and say that we're going to have more mm-hmm. after this one closes at the end of November. There was yes. going to be another one after that, and then another one. And we can be as wrapped around the axle or as peaceful as we want about all of it. Yes. And you said, there was a key word you said there, as, as we want. We can mm-hmm. choose to be, because as I was coming through history, and then examples were coming through my head, like when I'm in school and we're studying um, uh, the history of the United States and presidents and all that kind of carrying on, the stuff was... It's just a repeat story. So you can, like you said, you can choose to get upset about this or not. It's not new. Mm -hmm. You know, nobody ever died because they were disappointed at the outcome of an election. They might have been pissed, but, you know, you live to vote again. So it's like that with everything. It's just life. And so then I'm looking for God in it. Where, where's mm-hmm. the God piece in this? And, you know, I'll leave it at that because I like the direction you were going in better. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, so something that takes the drama completely out of uh, uh, the exposition is, and then something happened. Mm-hmm. Well, what happened? I don't know. Something happened. Well, that'll be the story. Something happened. Mm-hmm. 50 chance that you like it. Mm-hmm. If you're one of those unhappy people, then maybe it's a 70% chance that you won't like it. But that has less to do with the thing that happens and more to do with the person's preferences and whether they like things or not. But and that's okay. Yeah. So like, what do you want above all things to happen? And from, I'm just going to say, you know, like, I want to be at peace. I want to feel okay. Mm-hmm. So I tell you what, I'm going to wait this disaster out. yeah and if there's something for you for us for each of us individually to do while the disaster is unfolding then go ahead and follow that guidance and you know right back to meditation Mm -hmm. so meditation is simply stilling our monkey mind our uh our (laughs) our intellectual voices in our head Mm -hmm. so that we can hear the guidance of the infinite so we can be informed by something new that's going on in the world around us. And if we get that guidance and we ignore it, like, oh, the ocean is behaving strangely. And my guidance is saying, run up the hill, but the ocean looks really interesting. So I'm going to run down to the ocean and see what's going on. And it's a, it's a tsunami. And it was my fascination with the ocean receding that made me run down there. It's like, you know, the guidance was there. Mm-hmm. The guidance is there, head for the hills. Mm-hmm. And interestingly, when, you know, the stories of tsunamis coming in, the animals all head for the hills. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Any of the animals that aren't in captivity survive. Yeah. And it's the people who said, well, the, the ocean's going out. Let me walk down and see what the sand looks like behind where the, where the tide line was. You know, I feel, I feel very sad for what happens to them. I'm completely unsurprised. Mm-hmm. <laughs> 
you know, what can you do? But so, that doesn't that we're go. Talking, we're, no, go ahead. Go ahead. No, no, you go. All right. So I, again, that's the one speaking. I use term speaking to you, uh, warning you about the tsunami or whatever else is going to happen. And you have a choice to respond the way you want to. So how do yeah. you? How it's do not you even go? warning you about the tsunami. It's urging you to go to that to, to to seek higher ground. You don't need to have a warning and know that something bad is happening to hear to have the guidance and say, "Hmm, it's time to put the cigarette out before I go fill up the gas can." <laughs> you don't need to know about <laughs> the explosion to follow the guidance, and you never yeah. have to know that that's a possibility. <laughs> yes, I agree with you. That might be a second, there might be a level before that, you know, where, because it's very difficult to follow a guidance if you're not accustomed to it, right? Right. And that's why, that's what meditation is about. Meditation is getting ourselves in that position where we're listening for that still small voice on a regular basis. Mm -hmm. So when it says something, we notice that we recognize the voice and we also have the possibility that uh, we're going to listen and notice that this is somehow different than it was previously. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So it's it's so, lots take, of possibilities. It's taking it really slow, you know. And that's another thing we're in fast mode all the time and missing cues. Mm-hmm. Uh, but if we do it as you said, you'll notice, and you don't have to know the why. But that's another thing, you know. I had this feeling. I had this urge. I trust it. I trust the feeling, and I'll go with it. I may not even like it, but I'm going to go with it Mm -hmm. because it's there, yeah. And if if we follow the guidance and something, quote, bad happens, stay tuned. Perhaps that bad thing will turn out to be something that's good, either Mm -hmm. instead or in addition. Mm. Uh, Great conversation about one thing many ways, and we're going to get back to it. Uh, But let us first take a, uh, a break. Okay. Yeah. Is Reverend Bill letting you know that the Practical Prayer for Real Results class is now available on demand? That's right. You can take it at your own pace anytime you want. All of the information is at BeTheLight.com. That's B-The-Light.com. You know where to find that stuff. The class is five lessons broken down into 18 modules, and you can take them at whatever pace is comfortable for you. As you work through the process, it starts out with the theory, goes into the practice. There are experiential activities and exercises. And at the end of the program, you will wind up with an understanding of how practical prayer works and a practical prayer for yourself that will work to create transformation in your life. And as you know, it works for everything. Take a look at the class online at BeTheLight.com. There's a sample lesson so you can see how the class is going to work for you and then dive in. The great news is it's on sale now. You can register and save $20 off of the regular price. I'm looking forward to seeing you in class. Welcome back to the Practical Prayer Podcast. I'm Carol, here with Reverend Dr. Bill Marcioni. We're talking about things coming back from time to time uh, over the, throughout history, and that one thing can show up in lots of different ways. And mm-hmm. an example is that Ralph Waldo Emerson wrote something, and that resonated. And then Thomas Troward or uh, Ernest Holmes uh, said or wrote something similar based on that, or maybe it wasn't based on that. Maybe it was a an extension of that. And then something happens in Carol's life and suddenly it's the same thing happening again. And then you go back and you look at those two sources and you say, Oh, that's my story. (laughs) Yes. Yes. It's uh, the feeling is fascinating um, when you experience it, but it also uh, gave me a, a thought about the work that I'm doing and anybody who's listening to work that you're doing. Um, it's going to be meaningful to somebody at some point. So we may not see the value in in the things that we do today, but it is very valuable, you know, because I I pulled out everything that I had on Emerson just for no reason. It just sparked and I'm like, oh, wow, okay, let me, oh, okay, there's my stuff. And it's it's, somebody's going to do that for, with what we put out now. And, and I think it's, it's important. 
although it may be a repeat or re- a restatement uh, in, a, in a different way or a different context, it, to me, it's still God. That's, that's what I came up with. It's still mm. God. Suddenly I felt an overwhelming pressure because I remember when I was reading Emerson's essays, um, and it wasn't the first time, I think it was the second time that I read them. Uh, and I was on vacation and I had been, it had been a lot of work leading up to this vacation. We were on the beach. And so I was, said at the very beginning of this vacation, I'm going to read Emerson's essays on the beach. And I would go down to the beach and I would read and like within 10 minutes I would fall asleep. So I'd read, you know, a few paragraphs of Emerson and then I would take a nap and wake up and read another paragraph and fall back asleep and have another nap. It took an entire week to get through one of the essays. Mm -hmm. So uh, the part that I find intimidating is, wow, is somebody going to actually take an entire week (laughs) of sleeping and, and considering in order to work through an episode of the Practical Prayer podcast? And, you know, my, my ego mind says, nah, but who knows? But no, but yes, let's stay there for a second. Yes, that, that is going to be the case. With uh, You Fall Asleep, I'll read Emerson, and he, he really writes very differently. And I don't understand a single word a lot of times, you know. <laughs> I just don't. But I'll just continue to read and read and read until I understand the way he thinks, the way he expresses. And then, you know, after a while, then I can read it and it's just real simple. With the practical prayer, you know, jumping up to fast forward to now, it's more than just five steps, you know, which is when I first came on board, when I first got home and I was (laughs) in your class on practical prayer, it was five steps. And I thought, okay, no biggie, because on the other side of the street, there's about five, maybe four or five. So, okay, we're good. So I'm listening to yours, which are a, are a bit different. Um, a bit different, yeah. <laughs> they're a bit different. And they're not mine. They're Ernest Holmes, but they're still a bit different. Okay. So, but you're doing practical prayer, which ha- is a different, I won't say spin. There's... Well, yeah, it's a, it's a different branding. A different branding. Okay. So the, the point is, you said, well, people have difficulty in years to come. Um, sure. Because you can't sum it all up in five steps. And your book is wonderful, but you can't sum it up all in your book because there are things that happen that precipitate uh, the experience or the questions that we bring to the prayer. You know, the the pre, before step one, you know, the, the prep work, different experiences. And you got, sometimes you don't even know that your experience is okay here? Is it? Does this mean me? And you say yes, of course it does. But yeah. it, a person unfamiliar with that may miss it and not realize that yeah, this is you too. You got to find your, you know, your avenue to step one, and and it's there. So it just yeah. take a minute. Don't. Well, I, just... <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll I'll tell you. Uh, I, I will say out loud one of the secrets about not just practical prayer, but uh, uh, all of this uh, experience of of transformation and creating uh, newness in our lives. Uh, The five steps in practical prayer are tremendously helpful. The technique of manifesting uh, or doing affirmations is wonderfully powerful and it works, uh, except at some point it stops working. And even the practical prayers, you know, you do five step practical prayer and it doesn't work. And that's what we have the other two steps for. And what it comes down to is the steps are all a technique. They are a way to get a shift in consciousness, to change the way that we are not just thinking, but the way we're engaging in the world. Mm -hmm. And interestingly, as a teacher, I know that I can't teach somebody consciousness. Somebody has it and is aware of it or not. Mm -hmm. And what we can do is we can cultivate the awareness of consciousness and cultivate the ability of somebody to use those conscious tools that they have and to create newness in their lives. And some people are really adept at it. They jump in and they do it immediately. It's like somebody who's like naturally knows how to swim or a child prodigy who, you know, at age three can play the violin. Mm -hmm. So, you know, good for them. It doesn't mean nobody else can play the violin. It doesn't mean that they're never going to struggle with anything else in their life. And oh, by the way, the child prodigy eventually is going to come up with something that's going to be difficult for them. 
and we're going to try not to go nya nya when it happens. Uh, but what happens is it's consciousness. It is a way of accessing and using and uh, expressing that creative power that we have. And the five steps in practical prayer and all the other things that I've been mentioning are ways to do that. And they're ways to get started. Because after somebody's been doing this for a while, yeah, the five steps are really important. And sometimes something happens and I want to be able to focus my awareness, my attention on that transformation or having peace or harmony or uplift or whatever right. come along. And I get to use the steps in the prayer. And the rest of the time, I can be in that space of consciousness knowing that love is unfolding, that good is at hand, and just be in the flow of that guidance and the good things kind of happen and I get to go through my life and it seems much easier than it did in the previous time. And that may have something to do with the fact that I've been doing the five-step practical prayers and it might be the fact that I've been cultivating that consciousness of creativity and a peace of mind and of harmony and of alignment with the one and that makes the experience different. Absolutely <laughs> does. But No, it absolutely <laughs> does. That... That level of consciousness, and and I try to find words that people can uh, handle. Consciousness is a big word, and it sounds mm -hmm. really deep. And so I'm thinking, well, okay. that's why it took 159 episodes to mention it. <laughs> yeah. I figured it was okay this this far in this, to to mention that. Yeah, yeah. Um, aware, being aware of something because you used uh, being in the flow of goodness and and all of that. So that should be our baseline, you know, our baseline. It's not always, but that's what you're shooting for. Because then when other things come, uh, for me, for example, you know, I'm experiencing some various challenges in different ways. And I don't think about the prayer not working. I just never think about a prayer not working. I think, what am I missing? What am mm -hmm. I missing here? And because I think I know I'm missing something because it's supposed to be smooth, it's supposed to be nice, peaceful, you know, unencumbered, all of that. And what I'm experiencing is not that. So what am I missing? And then, you know, kind of backtrack from there. But my intention is not to deal with or accept this ridiculous outcome in front of me <laughs> as... <laughs> 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 you know, as the end result or, you know, the final say, this is not it. I'm missing something here because it does not mesh or is not in alignment with peace and, you know, flow and can, and f tranquility, the nice words that you use. Yeah. And you just made me think of a, a, a nice hypothetical story which I'm going to tell, of somebody who is on the turnpike and they're driving and they got a long trip <clears throat> and they need gas. And so they're going to pull off at the next, just like a rest stop uh, with gas station and all the rest of that. And they come up to that and it's closed for renovations. <sighs> mm. So now I'm running low on gas. I'm late. I'm on my trip. The rest stop's closed. It's a tremendous inconvenience. Now there's a problem. And we can engage with that as a problem. And then realize, okay, now I got to keep driving, then I got to get off at the next exit and go through the toll, and I got to find a local gas station and deal with all of that stuff and then get back onto the highway. That's going to delay me, and it's all the rest. Of it. And go through with that plan B and get to the rest stop and have it turn out, or the, the gas station, have it turn out that long lost friend from high school happens to be there at the same time. Haven't seen this person mm. in decades, and oh my God, they're right here. <laughs> And I get to reconnect with this person, something that I'd never expected would happen. And there's an opportunity for us to get together because there's news about other members of the class. And then something completely different happens because of that. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. good news or bad news? <laughs> <laughs> no, the rest stop was closed. No, it's bad news. Oh, well, maybe not. Maybe there's something else that's happening. You know, maybe there's something else that's going on. And being in that, like you said, being in that place of acceptance of being in the flow, it's like, okay, well, that's not, I, I thought I was going to get gas at the rest stop. Apparently I'm not. So instead of getting all wrapped around the axle that I have to, to come up with plan B, it's like, all right, let's see what happens with plan B. You know? But you, you, you have to make a decision or get to a place where you say, okay, I expect good. And when this is not good, I look and say, where is the good in this? Right? 
where it's got to be yep. some what's going to work here because and personally I've saved myself a lot of frustration and grief and it has a lot to do with this let me say it had a lot to do with age because frustration just well my hair is a little bit gray right <laughs> a little bit a little bit um but frustration and grief and you said what wrapped around the axle yeah it's going to get mm-hmm. more and more gray and other yep. things are going to happen i'm not interested in all that i would rather just have peace and be okay and not be getting prescriptions for you know all kind of whatever that stress causes ah come on let's Let's do this life differently. So, yeah, and uh, and see what the gift might be. Yes, see what the gift might be. Mm-hmm. I had an experience a couple of weeks ago. Um, so I was at the gym and I get done with my workout and I go back to my locker to change back into my street clothes. And there's another guy who comes in and the whole locker room is completely empty and his stuff is in the locker right next to mine. Mm-hmm. And he looks at me and says, "Doesn't it just figure?" entire locker room and like here we are crowding each other and i said every time this happens i buy a lotto ticket because what are the chances (laughs) 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 it's like and you know that's the thing and and he kind of looked at me like i'd never thought of it that way so and i did acknowledge that i hadn't had a jackpot ticket doing that before but you know what the heck keep on trying see what happens but that's such a good attitude you know you a Getting in the practice of a good attitude in whatever situation, it just helps. It just helps. You know, in, in some of the some of the various repeats I'm going through now, it's more than one. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, rather than just get messed up about it or angry or even annoyed, I'm thinking, okay, so this is all working together for my good. So let's just either try to see the good. Imagine what the possibilities would be, or just let's just get on with the day because the good is going. (laughs) (laughs) You know, the good is happening. The good is happening. So yeah, and let's uh, let's take another break, and when we come back, uh, let's do a practical prayer on the good is happening. Yeah, that's good. That's good. Yeah, we'll do that. Learn to put practical prayer to work in your life. The steps are simple to learn and let you begin to get real results to create the life of your dreams immediately. Rev. Bill Marcioni's widely acclaimed book, Practical Prayer for Real Results, gives you a clear summary of the new thought principles behind practical prayer and the series of easy-to-understand steps found in the most effective prayers from religions and spiritual practices all over the world and throughout history. Practical prayer is not a replacement for your religion or practice. It's a technique to make the work you do in consciousness even more effective. The book includes 40 prayers on various topics that you can adapt as needed and use as your own. Practical Prayer for Real Results is available in paperback, Kindle, and audiobook on Amazon or at b-the-light.com. That's b the light Com. Welcome to the welcome back to the Practical Prayer Podcast. I'm Carol here with Reverend Dr. Bill Marcioni. A great conversation. Yeah. It's going all the way back to the early 1800s and Ralph Waldo Emerson. Uh, with, and ideas that are as, that are timeless because yeah. this stuff has been going on forever. And so, yeah. and, and that's just sweet. I, 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 I can't even summarize what we've been talking about this episode. Well, sure you can. The one. Oh well, that's what we were always yeah. talking. About. <laughs> <laughs> but sometimes you just slide it in. So I thought I'd be the first one to just slide that right in there. But I can just okay. see the you know the God thread, I call it, the God thread just coming through and showing up. And, you know, all this is not new. Just kind of reflect back and see what God might be trying to show us or how we can have another opportunity to 
do it differently, think differently. It's 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 kind of nice. I don't want to say it's a game, yeah, because that could be offensive. But um, yeah. Well, it, when you when you say it's a game, that that can feel like it's trivializing mm-hmm. when somebody's going through a challenging right. situation. Right. Right. Um, and the meaning is that when everything seems to be working well, you know, things are coming together now. But if you're playing Yahtzee, it's all about what the dice say. Mm-hmm. And it's not that there's something good about a six, but if you get all sixes, then that's great. And if you need twos, then sixes are bad. Mm-hmm. So it's it's about appropriateness and the the, the pieces fitting together. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So that's going to be the prayer today. The prayer is about awareness that the good is happening. And good is different for everybody. I can say this is good and imply that the opposite of that or everything else is not good or not as good. And that's not my business. This good that I'm opening myself to is an example of the way that my experience can unfold that will be pleasing and harmonious and uplifting for me. And a couple of things that we get to pay attention to are, first of all, it's not the things that we want to have happen that are the most important. If I have a job and I really want to get that job, and the reason that I want to get that job is because then I'll be able to buy the things that I haven't been able to buy so far, and I'll be able to do the things that I could, I've been trained to do, and I'll be able to work in an air-conditioned office with people who are doing the same sort of things. Well, all of those have a feeling to them. They have a feeling of, of enoughness and prosperity and success and camaraderie and of, of giving and contributing and participating that go beyond the specifics of the job. So when we remind ourselves that it's the experience, it's that felt reality that we get to have as a result of whatever is the specifics that are going on, that opens up a world of possibilities. And it's also a reminder that even if we don't get the job that we thought we wanted, we say, that's the job that I want. And that job goes to somebody else and we can be completely uh, heartbroken. Oh my God, I didn't get that job. But there's another job. There's another possibility. There is another way to share our time and our gifts and our talents and our skills and be uplifted and have that same feeling we were talking about. So that's what we're talking about when we say the good is happening. Somehow, some way, good is unfolding right now, right now for each of us. So let's go through the whole practice and process. Is it safe to do so? Close your eyes or otherwise turn away from the specifics in the world around. It's all there. It's all relevant. It all has informed exactly what we're thinking, where we are, and the ways that we want to be engaging with the world next, even though that's not the whole story. That yearning that we have for that new feeling of uplift, of success, of satisfaction, of completion, of prosperity, of wellness, of comfort, of whatever it is that we're looking for, that good is available. Sometimes in exactly the way that we think, and sometimes in ways that right now would seem to be so mysterious, how could that possibly be the good that I'm seeking? And yet the good is always happening. It is always unfolding. Because there is that one, that one divine power and presence, that one source, that one love. We call it God or nature or spirit. We call it the Big Bang or the happy coincidence. We call that one creative power the source of everything that exists. That one has been sharing itself throughout history since the very beginning of time. That one divine presence, that one limitless love, that one infinite energy, that one presence has been sharing and unfolding and revealing and recombining upon itself to bring about everything that exists everywhere through this man- throughout this manifest universe. Everywhere, everything. Everything is that one taking its own form. That includes every galaxy, every star, every planet, every person, every particle, every moment, every activity, everything is that one expressed in a different way. And that one is expressing itself right here and now as me and as everyone within the sound of my voice. Everyone listening to this prayer is that divine God essence expressed in their own way. That good is happening now. 
it is unfolding now in a way that brings more of that experience of uplift, of harmony, of sweetness and richness and joy and goodness into our lives. And we may have an idea of what the goodness looks like, but more importantly, we have an idea of what that goodness feels like. So as we allow ourselves to be informed as to the wonderful ways that that feeling can show up as we are invited into these next experiences of good and more good and more good, that one creative power response, it creates this next newness now for each of us in our own way, bringing more of that good, more of that uplift, more of that peace of mind, that serenity and satisfaction, more of that comfort and vitality, more of that prosperity and love and connection and creativity into our lives. It's unfolding now. It's happening now for each of us in our own way. And there's nothing that stands in the way of that. Good and more good pressed down and overflowing for each of us. And I'm so thankful for it. With this deep feeling of thanks, I speak this word and I release it into that creative law that creates everything, that has created everything, that is creating everything, and is now creating this. And so I let it be. And so it is. The Practical Prayer Podcast with Rev. Bill Marcioni and Carol Lawrence is a production of BeTheLight.com. Be-the-light.com. Where you can find more information about practical prayer for real results. Our theme is by Music of Wisdom. You can learn about the spiritual community of New Thought Philadelphia with daily guided meditations, weekly celebrations of spirit, and Rev. Bill's classes in practical spirituality at NewThoughtPhilly.org. This podcast is supported by listeners like you. We're grateful for your tax-deductible donation at newthoughtphilly.org or the link in the episode description.